Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leathercraft, and we are making a simple but beautiful leather gun holster. Now in chapter one, we've got our pattern knocked together, a couple of simple measurements that's clean and tight. Our leather is cut, ready to go. So chapter two, we're gonna step over here, drop in a traditional but very clean basket weave, and we're gonna round that with a camouflage tool or camo tool. It's gonna make that look very clean, finished, and professional. Now, anything I use in this video, weaverleathercraft.com, or check below, we've got links there, I'm gonna take you straight to the website. So let's do this. Let's step over here and knock in that basket weave. Now, if you've got a little stamping experience and you've done a little stamping, you can certainly move forward. I'm gonna go over just a couple of design notes for those of us who are new to stamping or wanna add some stamping in for a design. First off, easy to do. Even the simplest design looks great. Now, on the basket weave, we've got multiple designs. We're gonna use this traditional basket weave. It's got a rope design down the middle of it. There we go, looks good. I can see every detail in that stamp head, even the shading, very nice. But also too, we've got a very cool stamp and I love this as well. It's got a cool little flower design in the middle. All right, we're gonna go with traditional. Now, with our design, what I've done is taken, taken our pattern, and I've simply laid that out on another piece of paper. Now, a couple points here. First off, we could absolutely go basket weave all the way across the gun. I prefer not to because when we hit this bend, that impression is gonna back out. Not completely, but it's gonna be inconsistent between here and here, and I don't want that. But secondly, I want this cool little panel because right here, again, a design point, you can, you can basket weave all the way up behind that but my point is I'm not big on having hardware in the middle of a design. So we're gonna double the coolness there, right? We're gonna make that parallel with our strap. And all you have to do to find out how your strap's gonna come in, simply fold your pattern, put your gun in, and you'll see exactly the angle that strap line will be, okay? So we're gonna go to the trouble to add a nice basket weave. Let's go to the trouble to work that in nicely. Now, with our holster, notice my basket weave is 90 degrees for my strap. Not big on that. Let's correct that on this holster and let's go in the direction of our strap. But secondly, notice here, I didn't do a very good job of working around my strap. Again, we're gonna correct that. All right, so gonna come in one half inch from my spine, from my center line, end, edge, and back, or my strap line. Round holes, around corners on that, easy enough. We'll cut that out. Now the problem here though, is that that's not gonna make a great pattern. We're gonna to have to scribe this onto our leather. So I'm gonna transfer that over to some of our plastic sheeting. It's not gonna be an issue. All right, first step, casing our leather. Now, there are all manner of opinion out here. In fact, the top end guys, of which I am not, let's go ahead and put that out there right now. Top end guys, and this is simply water, will soak their leather 45 seconds, maybe to a minute in water. They may even add a dab of soap, dish soap, because that will break the surface tension. For me, I'm simply going to add water, multiple coats. Now, another good point here. Even if I'm tooling a small section, I'm gonna wet the whole piece because that's going to alleviate the risks of a water line. Say we're using a lighter dye, that will alleviate that problem. All right, let's just add one more good coat here. And we're gonna give that, let's say about 15 minutes. That's gonna let that water wick in nicely. There we go. Okay, notice how my water, it's holding for just a second before it evaporates or, or wicks in. So let's give that about 15 minutes, let that become very consistent, and we'll add in our design. All right, we've given that about 15, maybe 20 minutes to dry. Now, some of the top grain water has evaporated, it's wicked in. Now, just in my opinion, I want a little dryness on the flesh side. Again, just my opinion, because to me, when I stamp this, I'm gonna to start to feel a little resistance on my stamp head. It's gonna give me a very crisp, very clean stamp. It's not gonna be mushy, all right? So let's take our design. We can certainly measure this out, but easy enough to eyeball there. Let's trace this in. All right, there we go. Good consistent line. Now, with this, two points. The, the pattern or the piece of leather is actually going to stretch a little bit when we add our design in there. In this situation, not an issue because we're gonna cut our liner or, or glue our liner on overcut. We're gonna cut that to our face. Then we'll drop in our welt, cut that to our face. So if we expand a little bit here, it's no issue. But if we're gonna do the whole thing, we need to plan up front for that. 
All right, we've got our design dropped in. Now we're going to add what's called an anchor line. And we're gonna run that parallel with our strap line. So I'm gonna drop my straight edge in, square it on that line, and I'm gonna draw in just a light line. This is going to disappear, but we need enough line there for us to be able to see. All right, very cool, easy enough. Now let's take our stamp. I'm going to start just anywhere on that line, but what I wanna do is drop this edge, the inside edge, directly on that line. Now I'm gonna use my pinky on the back side of that tool. That allows me a little fine tuning. So let's drop that in. There we go. Now one good shot. There we go, that gives me a crisp stamp. Now the pros, they're good at one shot. I lucked out. What I typically can do, now, also good point, if you're a little light left or right, I can easily feel that stamp sit back down in there. Maybe I can lean a little bit towards me, get a little deeper on this side. Now it is consistent. All right, cool, easy enough. Let's flip our piece around. Now I'm going to take the very corner edge of this tool and I'm going to drop it in right on the outside edge of our center design, and again, right on our line. There we go, multiple hits. Don't worry about that. Outcome is what we're looking for. Again, I might be a little bit light on this side, so there we go, lean my tool a little towards me, good. Now let's jump to the other side, same thing, keeping that on our line. All right, we're starting to build a basket weave, good. Now let's flip this around, I'm gonna work my way in both directions, but we've got to note when we get close to our edge, we'll talk about that. All right, on that end, we're good. On this end, we're gonna get close, but with this, we're gonna add a camouflage tool. We're going to ring this. So therefore, I need about 3 eighths of an inch there. So let's take our tool, and I'm going to lean back. Lean towards me. There we go, and lean a little bit across the back. There we are. All right, so that's gonna fade out, but that camouflage will tool will cover that. Now on this other end, we're gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna lean back, lean my tool back. There we go, okay? What I need to be careful of is getting lines outside of my outside border line. All right, so from this point, I'm simply going to work my direction up towards my strap. All right, we're working up towards our edge here, so I'm simply going to lean my tool in just a little bit. There we go, make it a little lighter on the outside edge. All right, well, it's starting to look good. Now, is it spot on perfect? Absolutely not. I look down, I can see a little bit of a waver, but here's part of it. First off, you know what? If it looks good to me, that's all that matters. Same with you, if it looks good to you, that's all that matters. But secondly, we're gonna see every, every mistake, <laughs> every detail. Our end customer, or the person we're gonna give this to, is never gonna see that. They're gonna see a beautiful, consistent pattern. All right, I'm gonna work my way down from here, then we'll add our camo tool. There we go, all right, well that looks good. Okay, a little bit light across here, but we should be fine. Same down through here. All right, let's take our camouflage tool. Now I'm gonna start right on my edge. It's most, mostly almost a sunrise look. I'm gonna put each point flat against my scribed line. There we go, okay, looks good. And again, I can see every detail in that stamp head. So second strike, I'm going to put the right point in the left point. There we go, and I'm simply going to work my way around. Now, another design point. We've got round corners here because it's really hard to get a camo tool to sit nicely in a square corner. That's very tough, but with our round corners, it's gonna look great. Now, as we come down to our end, we wanna make this a consistent meet. So therefore, I'm just gonna eyeball, not make an impression, but I'm gonna eyeball, okay? We're a little bit long. So all I need to do, is I'm gonna scoop my tool just a little bit further than where I would normally drop it. We'll never see that, but over the course of two, three, or four stamps, it's not gonna be an issue. So let's spread him out just a little bit, and there we go. Well, you know what, that looks great. Very happy with that. 
clean and easy, but also too, how easy is that to do? And it looks spectacular. All right, follow me to chapter three where we're gonna, we're gonna glue in our liner, drop in our hardware, and work on our edges.